Hey guys, Spiritual Whistleblower here, live from Washington, D.C., from my hotel room. Um, I am exhausted. Let me tell y'all something. Yesterday, I participated in the um, Black Women's March in protest in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, it, it basically was, blah, blah, I'm tongue tied. Basically, a group of very strong, empowered Black women, we all gathered uh, yesterday. Uh, at the monument in Washington, D.C. And we we marched for all the black women, the young girls, teenage girls, children who were murdered, um, that we are no longer going to stick around. Uh, we, we, we've got to connect with politicians to make some changes to legislate legislation. Um, right now, the FBI and the CDC are reporting that the numbers are they're drastically changing. Um, last year, it was black women were being murdered by black men every six hours. As it stands right now, it is every five hours. It is that is ridiculous, y'all. Um, so there is there is a crisis in the African American community in terms of women being murdered, our children, girls being raped, sexually molested, and um, we we were protesting. And also I was one of the guest keynote speakers. I got to upload the video footage for that. I did get up there and I did my thing. I wish I could talk for hours because I could go on and on about this stuff, but I only had a limited amount of time to speak passionately uh, about narcissistic abuse and how important it is for black women. I love all my women of all races. I know that my fan base, my supporters are all different races and ethnicities. But please bear with me, ladies. There is a crisis in the African-American community. Black women are dying at an alarming rate and it is black men that are doing it. Do you hear me? So yesterday I had to get on my, my shit and just really speak from the gut. And um, I uploaded the speech on partially it's on my Instagram, but I'm uploaded here on YouTube. So you guys can hear it in its entirety. And I just want to thank everyone that was there that supported. And um, there's a march in London. I will be going to that black femicide march. Um, but uh, anyway, you guys, we're all my people in the Midwest, all my people from Chicago, Detroit. I will see y'all next weekend for Labor Day weekend. It's going down. Chicago, I'm doing a brunch this Saturday, September 3rd. It's at 1 p.m. For those of y'all that keep asking me what part of Chicago, because you don't want it to be in, it's not in the hood, y'all. Those of y'all that are inquiring, I did not, it's not in the hood. It is on, it's more of the suburbs of Chicago. Very beautiful area, okay? I will inform you in the email. So those of y'all that keep asking me what part of Chi-Town, the good part, Okay. Um, Detroit, same thing. Detroit, I will be in Farmington. Is it Farmington Hills or Farmington Mills? If you're wondering what part of Detroit, I understand. Tickets are on sale right now. If you want to see me this weekend, we got food, we got book signing, we got, uh, music cocktails. My, my sponsor is, uh, she's going to give me cocktails for both events, Chicago and Detroit, Chicago, uh, Chicago's 1 PM. It's a brunch. Detroit is 6 p.m. in the evening. That's Sunday the 4th. I'll see y'all this weekend coming. Let's get on with this video because, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just never ending with toxic people. Um, and I specifically, because I've dealt with enough of these people, I specifically want to talk about the covert narcissists today. Coverts, in my opinion, are the most difficult to decipher out of the spectrum of narcissists because coverts are so loving. Let me rephrase that. Coverts can emulate. They can act as if they're super loving, super warm, super empathetic, Bible thumping, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. Yada, yada. They're so, they, they know how to do the empathy stuff. So good y'all. They are so conniving and so difficult to figure out. My father, um, uh, my grandmother, may she rest in peace. She was so soft spoken, very gentle, very soft spoken. Um, acted as if she was so loving towards her grandchildren. 
And when I was a little girl, you know, when you're a kid, you can't decipher if, you know, the love is real or not. You just know, hey, that's grandma. Let me go hug grandma. And you, of course, she's going to love on and hug her grandchildren back because her grand, she's grooming her grandchildren. She's molding her grandchildren and manipulating them to serve her and to control her adult children. But as you become an adult and you start learning um, your family's um, psychological, you know, background and everybody's personalities, you're going to start to learn that grandma is a sneaky, conniving ass bitch. She's just very good at acting like a Christian and a very soft spoken woman and loving. And yeah, no, covert narcissists are the most difficult to detect. My father, the same way. Every time we're on the phone, praise the Lord, you know, pulling out the Bible and all that. He hid his shit behind his religion and his Bible scripture. And it fucked me up for years, but I'm on to it now. Okay. I can read a covert from a mile away. And what I want to talk about something specifically that coverts love to do because they're so, they can act so generous They can act so kind. They can act so giving and loving and empathetic. It's all an act. They can act godly and Christian like it's all an act. I hate this shit and I'm going to say it and I want y'all to get in the comments, share your experience. Let's hold a discussion about this shit because I'm over it. And this is why I'm the way that I am. A motherfucking covert will offer you help, offer you assistance, volunteer their time and effort, you know, say like you got to do something. Hey, you need my help. I don't mind helping. And I, you know, come, come here and, 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 you know, I'll help you do that. And I'll help, I'll assist you. They'll offer themselves to you. They'll offer their time, their money and everything to you. You don't have to ask them. You can just simply mention that you're doing something. Hey, I'll be in your city and I got this going on, this going on. Well, hey, let me, let me step in and help you. Let me, let me, um, what time are you going to be here? Cause I'll, 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 you know, I can meet you and I'll, I'll, I'll whatever you need from me. I'll, I got, they will offer, they will offer to step up to the plate and help you with this, that, and the third. And you didn't have to ask them. And in your mind, you're like, wow, that's really nice of them. This is generous. That's nice. But with a covert, what you have yet to learn and what you don't understand is it's not genuine. The only reason they're offering you something, and we do call this love bombing, by the way, because this is what you don't know this yet, but you're going to find out it's transactional. How do I know that it's a transactional type of uh, give and take type of thing instead of something that's genuine? It's because later down the line, what you're going to find out is that covert is going to throw in your face. Hey, I did this and that for you. They're going to bring it back up. And they're going to throw it in your face to remind you, you you do know I helped you. I did this. I did that for you. And you're going to be like, wait, that wasn't genuine. No, because it was transactional. When you're dealing with a covert narcissist, what you're going to learn is everything is tit for tat. They just don't communicate it. They have ways of communicating. Listen, if I do this for you, I'm going to expect something out of you later down the line. Or if you don't give me what I want or you don't behave in the way that I like for you or you don't fall in line, I'm going to throw this in your face, remind you what the fuck I did to try to make you feel guilty. I'm going to gaslight you. Oh yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to go there with you because it was never genuine to begin with. I had an ulterior motive behind it. I had a hidden agenda. Let me explain something. Real Christians will real, real motherfucking empaths, people that are loving people that are godly people that are truly Christian. Like when we offer help, when we offer to volunteer, we don't look for it. We don't look for nothing in return. We're not going to throw it back in your face. At least I don't. Everybody that I help, I do a lot of shit behind closed doors. Whether it's helping at a charity, whether it's helping a homeless person, whether it's doing a nice gesture for somebody, you'll never hear about it come out my lips ever again. Because my thing, the way that I live my life accordingly is to please God. 
if you're out here doing and helping and volunteering and doing things and you never speak about it because you don't want to be clout chasing, you don't want no special recognition, you don't want, you know, you understand that everything you do is being accounted for by God and God will repay you. God will bless you tenfold for the things that you're doing to help people when nobody's looking. However, covert narcissists, they're going to throw that shit back in your face. Well, bitch, I did that. Remember the time I did that for you? And remember I did this for you? Oh, I don't feel appreciated because, you know, I, bitch, I didn't ask you to do that for me. You volunteered. Let, let me check you. You volunteered. Now, my question is, what was your hidden agenda? Because now that I know that by you throwing it in my face, you're throwing something in my face that I didn't ever ask you to do in the first place. It was very nice for you to volunteer and step up and offer, even though I didn't ask you to fucking offer or step up, but why use it to gaslight me, to make me feel guilty and to make me out to be a user. This is what these people do. That shit is toxic as fuck. If I help somebody, if I volunteer to do something nice for somebody, whatever the circumstance, you'll never hear me. You'll never, ever hear me speak on it. I'm not going to sit up and gossip about it. I'm not going to be talking about you like a dog behind your back. I'm not going to say you use me. I offered, I stepped up and, and said, I wanted to do, I did. So whether we stop speaking whether we don't fuck with each other ever again, I'm not ever going to come out of my mouth and talk about the shit I did for somebody. Because if I love you and it's genuine and sincere, it's been already accounted for by God and God's going to repay me. I don't got to go around throwing dirt on your name and saying, oh, I did this, that, and this is what these toxic motherfuckers do. They do shit just to throw it back in your motherfucking face. And that shit is not cool. This is why I struggle. I don't like accepting gifts from people. I don't like accepting help from people. I'm very strong. Um, I'm very independent. Um, and I like doing things by myself and I have a heart. Some people be like, listen, Chanel, please let me help you. Please. You don't always got to please accept this gift. Everybody's not bad. Everybody, people got to literally beg me to, to let me let them in because I don't trust the motherfucker. So many people will do nice things for you just so they can have a story to tell, just so they can sit up and gossip, just so they could throw it in your face. That shit is not cool to me at all. And this is what toxic people do, especially covert narcissists, because they're sneaky and they are empathetic. They behave like Christians, but they, they, they have ulterior motives. They're one way to people, but they move like snakes when nobody's looking. And when they find out that you know that you, you're on to them, everybody else may not be on to them, but when you're watching them and you're watching how they move and you decide like, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to fuck with you no more. Then they're going to throw in your face everything they did for you because they don't like the fact that you're calling them out or you're cutting them off or you're starting to see them for who they are. Now they need a defense because how dare you? I did this for you. I did that for you. That's the only defense you got. Well, thank you because now you're letting me know you're not a genuine person and it wasn't from the heart. They tell on themselves all the time. All you gotta do is just sit still, be quiet and listen. Chicago, Detroit, I'll see y'all next weekend. It's been the Spiritual Whistleblower. I love you guys. Let's talk about it in the comment section.